Hey, welcome back. So you've done a little bit of research, heard people talking about a raw diet for dogs, but you're a bit too scared to make the switch. Does it all seem really complicated and expensive to you? Don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll have the six simple step-based formula to take their food to the next level. It's not hard and surprisingly, nowhere near as expensive as what you would think. Well, change is scary and I know how much you love your dog. Otherwise, you'd just be tossing some cheap supermarket store food in a bowl instead of watching this video, right? I'm going to teach you the simple set of guidelines that will help clear up some questions you may have so you can move your dog to a safe, high quality diet. After all, a healthy, happy pet lives longer, has less illness and things like allergies, dental issues, and costly vet visits. So if you're thinking of switching to raw, then I applaud you and I admire that you're doing your research first and not just jumping in. An unbalanced raw diet can do harm, but don't worry about that. If you follow these rules, you won't go wrong. Hey, meet Amara. Today we're gonna to make a meal for him so you can see how simple and uncomplicated it really is. So I better stop talking and get stop making. Okay. Firstly, I want to explain the BAF formula to you. It's a simple formula based on the 70-10-10-10 model. 70% meat, 10% offal, 10% bone, and 10% vegetables or fruits. This is the most important thing to remember when creating your own raw meals. So what the heck does BAF actually mean? It's an acronym, biologically appropriate raw, or as I like to say, real food or feeding. You are feeding a biologically appropriate or species appropriate diet. It's exactly what your dog was designed to eat. Before we go any further, it's really important to understand three things. The first thing to remember is do not be afraid. Um, well, we've all been conditioned to believe the marketing spin around complete and balanced. It's not hard to feed a species appropriate diet that is complete and balanced. Second, keep it really simple. You do not need to feed a bowl full of 20 different proteins or ingredients in every meal. Complete and balanced happens over a very much longer period of time. It really is a simple concept. We do it daily with our human diets and when you apply this, it is really as simple as just mix it up. Third, variety is the key, mix it up. Rotate your ingredients, offer a large range of proteins from different animals and don't feed the same thing day in and day out. So step one is the protein and fat rule. The staple of your dog's meals are meat. They should make up 70% of their diet. You can buy meat from your supermarket or grocery store, butcher or a reputable pet butcher or supplier. I don't need to tell you that. All of your dog's energy requirements come from just these two sources, proteins and quality fats. This makes up most of his meals. So it really is as simple as buying minced meat or ground meat or chunks of meat that you can cut down for your dog and popping them in the bowl. Uh, balance is important here. Uh, this means feeding uh, a diet that's about 10 to 20% fat in total, um, including all fats like fish oil that you need to add to your dog's raw diet. A great way to control the quality of your fat is by adding oils like fish oil, like these ones here, the capsules, uh, hemp seed oil or coconut oil uh, on rotation. Okay, now the second step, step two, get the calcium and mineral balance right. Calcium rule is 10 to 15% of your adult dog's total diet needs. They need to be bones. Puppies need at least 12% and up to 15% bone measure. Your dog needs a steady supply of minerals and trace minerals. If your dog is missing these minerals, things can go very, very wrong. You can develop crippling joint disease, heart issues, seizures, and more. This might sound frightening, and it is, but it's easy to get this step right simply with bones. So bone is made up of about 65% minerals, including phosphorus, magnesium, and zinc, but most importantly, calcium. Your dog needs a steady supply of these minerals. Meat without any bone at all contains a lot of phosphorus and very little calcium. So if the diet is too low in calcium, you'll often see bone and joint disease, especially in your growing puppies. So to keep your dog's bone content to the 12 to 15% range, you need some uh, of his meat to have the bone incorporated in it. Start with the meaty bones you can find at your butcher or local pet store and offer these to him two or three times a week. A great inclusion in every sort of second to third meal on a weekly rotational basis is chicken eggs. Love them. There's a lovely little uh, completely digestible uh, vertebrate through every one of them. 
Okay, we've done a video earlier on bones specifically. Have a look here or check out the link below. Okay, step number three, you need to add organ meats. It's difficult, if not impossible, to get enough vitamins and minerals out of in a raw diet without organ meats. Enter Mother Nature's multivitamins. And the organ that supplies the most, gram for gram, is actually the liver. About 10% of your dog's diet should be liver. This will supply most of his vitamins, such as vitamins B and C, and many of his minerals, including copper and folate. The main mistake raw feeders make is only adding liver though. There are many other organs you should feed your dog, and your job is to source as many of them as you possibly can. I find Asian butchers are fabulous for this. So there are two categories of organs, the secreting type and then the non-secreting type. Secreting organs are things like liver, uh, pancreas, spleen, kidney, sweetbreads, which are testicles, and eyes. So non-secreting organs are things like lungs, brains, green tripe, this delightful mess here, uh, and uh, things like giblets over here. These are duck giblets. These need to make up the other 5%. Together, the two types of organs make your 10% organ rule. It's interesting to note that heart, which is actually an organ, is actually a muscle meat, high in nutrients that should be around, that should make up around 5% of their diet. Heart is a major uh, source of taurine, and not all dogs can make enough of this essential amino acid, and so taurine must be included in your dog's raw diet. Taurine deficiency can cause heart disease. There is definitely truth behind the saying that you are what you eat. So you need to feed about 5% of your dog's raw diet as heart in one form or the other. Chicken, this happens to be a pork heart, you can do beef heart. Okay, step number four, add vegetation. Add your fruits and vegetables to make up 10% of their diet and choose organic if you can afford it. If you can't, it's okay. Broccoli, kale, and especially broccoli sprouts are a great source of cancer-fighting and anti-inflammatory nutrients. Check out our link below about super greens. Blueberries have a special affinity uh, for the brain and nervous system, and cranberries add bladder and kidney benefits. Most berries are a great choice. Many raw feeders stop at step three, and that's a mistake in my opinion. Step four is vital. Okay, so research shows that vegetables reduce the risk of cancer in both humans and dogs. This is because fruits and vegetables have important immune benefits. While fruits, berries and vegetables are an important addition to the raw diet, starchy carbohydrates like grains and legumes are not. They feed the wrong types of gut bacteria and are linked to chronic inflammation. You'll also want to avoid high sugar fruits and use low sugar berries instead, like these lovely little dried blueberries. Okay, step five, the last one, complete the balance. Many raw diets are deficient in two key nutrients, vitamin D and manganese, not magnesium, it's different again. To boost the vitamin D content, feed whole raw fish, whole eggs and egg yolks, vitamin D rich mushrooms or green lip mussels. Green lip mussels also increase manganese levels as will oysters and pretty much all shellfish. If you follow the first four steps, your dog's raw meals will be really quite reasonably balanced, but you wanna give your dog a raw diet because you want the ultimate nutrition. This last step will make sure your dog gets enough of the two micronutrients that are most likely to be lacking in a lot of raw diets. So here are some great food sources of vitamin D. So mushrooms, cooked. When mushrooms are exposed to sunshine, they can produce vitamin D, just like animals can. Um, whole eggs, very, very, very nutrient dense. The yolks from pasture raised uh, hens, raised in sunshine and eating a proper diet are rich in vitamin D. You can feed eggs several times a week. So green lip mussels and other mussel species are rich in vitamin D. Fatty fish like salmon, sardines and mackerel are also rich in vitamin D as well. As is cod liver oil, insert your fish oil over here. Manganese deficiency is fairly common in raw fed dogs if you're not careful. So, if your dog is deficient in manganese, it will usually show as weakened ligaments and connective tissue that can cause joint issues such as cruciate tears or luxating patellas. Manganese can also be found in spinach, but it's richest in the green lip mussels, followed closely by oysters and pretty much all shellfish. Adding mussels to your dog's raw diet will help provide the vitamin D and manganese that he needs. So as the saying goes, two birds with one stone, or muscle in this case. Well, there you have it. 
the five key elements that you need to create your very own complete and balanced meals at home. Remember the bar formula, 70% meat, 10% in total of secreting and non-secreting organs, 10% bone and 10% veggies, and you've got it covered. So it's probably easiest to see it in relative portion sizes. Here is a complete meal for my six kilo adult boy Amari you met earlier. He eats around 3% of his body weight daily. So this is about 180 grams of food. We've got meat, we've got our bone content in the form of our chicken neck. We've got our organs, both secreting and non-secreting. Uh, and some cooked veggies and the super boosting food, uh, seafood supplements that we add on the side, inclusive of some blueberries, mushrooms, obviously we've discussed as well, and our heart chicken in this case. Just for reference, just to compare, this is the amount of dry kibble that he should be eating on a daily basis according to Royal Cannon. I know which one I'd prefer. And if the cost is still bothering you, Amara's meal that we've made today has cost us just under $2.25. And to compare Royal Cannon Dry Food, following their feeding guidelines, he is supposed to have 110 grams of their food per day, which will cost you around $2.40. If you're like me and just did the maths, that's $24 a kilo of carbohydrates. <laughs> this is not the bath model at all. Raw feeding or species appropriate feeding means healthier dogs, saving you a fortune for your state on vet visits. So still on the fence and too scared to try? Don't be. Reach out in the comments below or visit our website for more information. We're here to help you. And if you found today's video helpful, please subscribe to our channel. We love producing this content for you. We'd love to hear any more ideas that you might have for stories or content that you'd like to see.